Shalom, my friends. Shalom, everyone online also. It's such a joy and a privilege to be here today to give God the glory. I would like to thank uh, Pastor Ellen, uh, the pastoral team and the leadership team of uh, Petra Church for this uh, wonderful opportunity to glorify God. Uh, before we begin, shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you for your presence here. Lord, I know that today you will speak to us. Today, Lord, you will set us free from whatever pain, from whatever suffering, from whatever bondages. Lord, this is the day, Lord. We want to trust in you to deliver us, Lord, and set us free in the name of Jesus. And of God's people say, Amen. Okay. My friends, I know, many of us Christians today, we struggle. It's true. We, we worship an awesome and mighty God. But the truth is, we are also human, correct? Yes? Or am I the only one? <laughs> so, we all suffer. We all go through challenges. We all go through difficulties in life, Right? And this is what happens. Many of us Christians, we go through divorce and we feel so condemned. Today, I want to say to all these people who are going through such struggles that Jesus loves you. You are not condemned, okay? You are not any less holy. You are loved by God, right? And for those of us who are going through depression, Yes, my friends, there are many of us Christians going through depression. And for those of us who are struggling with depression, I just want to encourage you. You are not wrong. It is not your fault. Okay? It is not that you are less worthy. And I just want to encourage you that Jesus loves you. And for every one of us that goes through suffering and pain, like myself, battling cancer for 10 years. I just want to share this that is very important and very close to my heart. I know many of us, when we fall sick, we don't understand why we fall sick, right? But this is just what happens to all of us. When we fall sick, somehow we feel condemned. Somehow we feel that, is this God punishing us? When we go through cancer, does it mean that we are so terrible that we sin against God and God is punishing us? I want to say this to all those who are sick, who are going through sickness, that you are not condemned. Amen? And if, for whatever reason, you've been praying and there is no healing, I want to encourage you it's not because you don't have faith. Amen? That is not fair. Not fair for us Christians to tell a fellow Christian who is sick that because God does not, you are not healed means you have no faith. That is not right. Now what is the truth here? My friends, when we all read the Bible, we know. Paul said to Timothy, drink a little wine. Why? Because of your many illnesses. Okay? So, what do we learn from this simple Bible verse? That yes, we all fall sick. Even the apostles and their students, right? So Timothy was sick with many illnesses. And what did Paul say? Drink some wine. Let me ask you this question. Is it because God cursed Timothy? No, right? So I want to share this with you to set you free. When you are suffering in sickness, it does not mean God curse you. It does not mean you sin against God. That's why God punish you. Okay? Because look at Timothy. You understand this? Very clear? Now, when Timothy was not healed, obviously he wasn't healed, right? Correct? What happened? What did Paul say? Drink a little wine. So let me ask you this question. Was it Paul that has no faith? Or was it Timothy that has no faith. That is why he is not healed. So my friends, I want you to be very sober. I want you to be very aware. Stop living in such condemnation. Amen. 
God is here. Jesus is here to set us free from all these false teaching, from all these deception. Okay? We fall sick because we fall sick. We go through trials and tribulations in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen? So, please, be encouraged. Be lifted up. And today, I just want to share with you my testimony about how I walked through this journey with Jesus. Ten years battling cancer with no cure, no medication. In 2004, when I was first diagnosed with this form of cancer, this is what the doctor said to me. There is no known cure. Why? Because you are the one and only one in Singapore with this condition. And there's no drug company that will invent a drug for 50 people in the US and less than 300 people in the whole world that have this condition. You are the only one. So what can we do? There's very little literature about this condition. It's called endolymphatic sac tumor. Okay? When the doctor presented this to me, he says, the only thing we know is surgery. And even in surgery, it is not guaranteed. So what do we do? He says, you go home, you think about it. The only way is surgery. So when I went back, I discussed with my wife. We went to our separate corners to pray. And after that, we gathered together again. And I said, so what did the Lord say to you? She says, he gave me Romans 8.28. I say, okay, that's the same verse I got. And we were just thinking, both of us at that point in time, all these things will work out for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to His purpose. And we are thinking and thinking, good? How can good come out from this cancer? So this is the thing that I have to face. This is the reality that I have to face. Okay? It's uncertain. I have to go through this surgery and God say it will work out for good. So this is the thing, my friends. It's never easy to make such a decision. What do we do? How can we trust God? Many of us, when we go through struggles, we say, is God even real? God, where are you? Correct? Right? Come on, let's be very honest. We struggle. We, we, we look at all these things and we say, God, how can I even get through this? But this is what the Lord is saying. You must trust in me with all your heart. Amen? Proverbs 3, 5, 6. It's very simple. Lean not unto your own understanding. What does that mean? Don't keep asking why. If you say you trust me, you trust me. How do you know you trust God? When you say you trust God, it means you don't worry. But when you worry, it means you don't trust God. Amen? This is the acid test, my friends. We cannot pretend to trust God, okay? Because if we say we trust God and then we worry, which is it? You cannot be double-minded, right? When you say you trust God means you don't worry. So it says, lean not unto your own understanding. What does that mean? Don't keep asking why. Why me, God? Why must this happen? What did I do wrong? Blah, blah, blah. You know, on and on and on. No need. Lean not unto your own understanding. Meaning to say, Lord, if this has to happen, so be it. Because it is through trials and tribulations that I have to enter into heaven anyway. So I shall accept my portion. Amen. I know it's not easy. That's why it's so quiet. No, amen. <laughs> so, this is the thing that we have to learn. In all our ways, in all that we do, we must acknowledge Him. We must know that He is sovereign. How do we know that He is sovereign? He says, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. Isn't that enough? The beginning, He knows. The end, he knows. Can we accept him as sovereign? Yes? Yes? It's a no-brainer, right? He already said, I know the beginning and I know the end. So, accept that I am sovereign. Rely on me. Trust in me. In all your ways, acknowledge me. Acknowledge that I am sovereign. And what will happen? Now, this is the part where we all can wait expectingly. He says, 
I will direct your path. Meaning to say, I will tell you where to go. Meaning to say, in some versions of the Bible, I will make your path smooth. I will smoothen out your path. So it's easier. Do we see this as the key, my friends? We need to trust God. So from the very beginning, I'm faced with a life and death situation where even the professionals don't know what to do. The only thing I can do is trust God. And so, at that point in time, this is what I said. Lord, I've, I mean, I'm serving you now. So, this is happening and I don't understand. So, I lean not unto my own understanding, but Lord, why is this happening? You see, I'm human, you see. And this is what the Lord said to me. If I don't break you, I cannot use you. And so guess what I say to the Lord? Don't want, don't want, don't want. No, right? So I say, okay, Lord, if you have to break me, then you break lah. No choice, right? <laughs> so I say, God, from here on now, I will make a covenant with you. I will trust you. You see, my friends, this is what I call making a covenant with God. When you say you trust Him, means you trust Him. You don't worry, you don't doubt, you don't ask why, you don't say, God, how long more? Sounds familiar? So what do we do here? Very simple. We went back to the surgeon and said, okay, let's go ahead. Again, my friends, if you go to the doctor when you're sick, it doesn't mean you have no faith. I assure you, even if you go to the doctor, God can still heal you through the doctor's hands. Amen? So please don't become overly religious, okay? And start believing in all these, you know, deceptions. Let God be God. So God said, trust Him. I trust Him. I went for the surgery. The first surgery took 20 hours performed by two surgeons, one from ENT, one from NNI, okay? So two surgeons, 20 hours. If you feel at the back of your ear, it's a bone, okay? So what happened is they have to saw through the bone and then both of them go in. 20 hours. At the end of the 20 hours, this is what they said to my wife. I'm sorry, we are too late. When we open up, we saw that this tumor is more aggressive than any cancer we've ever seen. It has destroyed the nerves, it has destroyed the eardrum and everything. So we have to dig out everything. So my friends, what you see here is what I call cosmetic. Okay? No, it's a real ear, okay? It's not a fake ear. <laughs> it's just that inside the hole, they have already sewn up. Okay? So this is not, not functional. I'm deaf on one side permanently. This is only for show. Thank God they, they left the ear intact. <laughs> so, so they dug out everything and remove everything and say, we are too late because it has spread to the main artery. So what does that mean? Looking at how aggressive this tumour is, you, you, you ever played the game Pac-Man? Yes? So those in my era, you know, uh, Pac-Man. <laughs> so it's like a Pac-Man, you know. It goes and it destroys all the tissue, everything in its path it will destroy. So it has now lodged itself on your main artery. It's spread there, and it's lodged itself there, and this is what's going to happen. From the way we calculate now, we see how it destroys everything. We calculate, we decided, and we know you only roughly about six months to live. What is going to happen? It's going to bite through the artery. The artery will burst. Blood will flow out from your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and your ears. You will collapse and you will die. Wow. You imagine, uh, you just get up from 20 hours surgery, Okay, you're still in the ICU, right? And then my wife says to me, dear, you're going to die in six months' time. <laughs> so what do you do? What would you say if you were me? So this is what I said to Judith. Okay, I understand. I have six months, but at least I have six months, amen? And in these six months, if I ever get out of this hospital, still able to function, we will go forth into the mission field and we will make it count. Amen? 
We're going to do so much in these six months because no time already. Ma. Six months. It's either I do it or I don't, right? So six months, we'll do it. And true enough, after two weeks, I was discharged. I recovered a bit, but this is what the Lord said to me. Go into the mission field and glorify my name. Huh? Glorify your name. Lord, if you heal me, I can say, Hallelujah, I'm healed in Jesus' name, right? Then everybody will clap, correct? But Lord, I'm not healed. I'm going to die. How do I glorify your name? So he says, just go. So what do we do? When God says, just go, we go, right? But then I try to negotiate. I say, okay, Lord, since I'm going to die, and since you say go, I go, okay, I go. But you know, I haven't been to Hawaii before. <laughs> so can I go to Hawaii and glorify your name? <laughs> and the Lord says, yes, go. So he sent me to Pakistan. <laughs> so right there in Pakistan, okay, men on one side, women on one side, it was not, not air con, no proper flooring, all dirt, dirt floor and straw mats, okay? And I'm standing there and I'm all nervous and I'm saying, okay, Lord, if you have something to say, now is a good time, okay? So, and suddenly I just thank God that the Holy Spirit filled me and I started sharing about my condition. I told them, you know, I only have six months to live. Doctor says this is my condition and I'm going to die a horrible death and so on and so on. And suddenly, as I said, well, anyway, I choose to trust God, right? Because trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge that He's sovereign and He will direct your path. So they realized, wow, you know, this man is going to die. But yet, he chose to glorify God. I said, yes, even though I may not be healed, yet I choose to glorify Him. And even if I die, I will say, hallelujah, and I will die praising Him. And that was when everybody stood up and whoa, everybody was so excited and happy. So then and there, I thought, wow, I'm there to bless them, you know, right? But actually, for those of you who have done mission, you know it's not true. You thought you go there and bless them. Uh. But actually, no, they bless us, okay? So this is what happened. So as I was, you know, going on with the program and everything, this... Uh, the pastor said to me, okay, let's go and visit those people who are uh, now homeless. Two Christian villages, they were attacked by 10,000 radical, you know, terrorists, okay? So, they were chemical bombed, all right? And they cannot put out the flames. It was so intense and all the homes were destroyed. And I went to this home, okay? You see the fan, even the fan is all bent. So imagine how big is the fire. And this is what happened. He brought me, this guy brought me to the room. He says, you see now, this is all that I have left, my house. Okay? And he showed me a black patch on the floor. He says, you see this patch here? Yeah, this is my mother. Then he brought me to another room. He says, you see this black patch here? This is my wife. And he brought me to another room. And he says, you see these two black patches here? These two are my daughters. And he went on and on and on and showed me seven patches. Okay? In one night, in one night, seven family members died in the fire because they were persecuted, because he chose to be a Christian, because he chose to say, I worship Yeshua HaMashiach. And that's why he's persecuted, okay? And seven family members died. My friends, how do you comfort someone that lost seven family members in one night? I stood there, I looked at him, he looked at me. He was crying, I was crying. I didn't know what to say, okay? And I'm like, you know, lost for words. And he turned and he looked at me and he says, Yet, I will trust Jesus. And I looked at him and I said, wow. 
You know, my friends, I was blown away. I don't know what to say. Such faith I have never seen. Seven family members killed. And he said, I choose to trust Jesus. My friends, you and I, we think we have problems. Come on, think again. Okay? We think we have problems. And look at this guy. Seven family members died. And he still say, I will trust God and I will praise Jesus. Wow. Come Sunday service. There's this brother coming to church in crutches, okay? So the pastor says, last week at the front of our church and the main gate, he came and he was shot. So as he approached, I asked him, brother, can you share with me a little bit more what happened? So he said, yeah, you know, when I came to church that Sunday, these two guys came in a motorbike. One of, the, one of them got off the motorbike from the back, took out a pistol, and he shot me in the leg. And then he came up to me and he pointed the gun at me and said, I don't want to see you coming to church anymore. And I asked him, brother, then what, what happened? What did you say to him? He says, I was in pain. My leg was bleeding. I was on the floor. And I just looked at him and I said this. If you don't want me to come to church, don't shoot me here. Shoot me here. Amen? Come on, my friends. Let's give God the glory. Such faith I have never seen before. Okay? These are life and death situation. If you and I think we have problems in the office, problems at home, problems with your spouse, your children, yeah, financial problems, my friends, please think again. These people face life and death situation. And what do they say? I choose to praise God. Amen. I choose to give thanks to Jesus. I choose to trust in Jesus. So what do we do? We continue to serve God. We continue to do the missions. And six months later, I never die. So I continued. The Lord just said to me again, go and feed the orphans and the widows. And I said, Lord, I'm not a rich man. How am I going to feed these orphans and widows? And I'm dying. I got cancer. Although I'm not, not dead yet, but I'm dying. I'm not healed, right? So he said, yeah, go and feed. And I said, how? He says, start a food store. My friends, you think about it, okay? Cancer in the head. I have to fry pasta for 12 hours every day, especially on the weekends and holiday. No off day whatsoever, okay? And I'm frying pasta to feed the children that I don't even know. And I'm not... Well, anyone who has cancer before, you know. Cancer patients, we do get physically tired. I don't know why, I can't explain. But we do get physically tired. So, will you do it? Will you set up a stall to fry pasta for 12 hours a day just to feed children you don't even know? And this is what the Lord says. Go and feed my children. So what do we say? We say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. Amen? We're not going to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Bless me. Send my pastor. <laughs> right? We say, Lord, send me. Right? So we must obey. We must come before the Lord. If we want to keep looking at our situation, we want to keep looking at how inconvenient it is for me, how painful, how, how I have to struggle, then my friends, how do we serve God? Do you want to serve God? Do you really want to serve the Lord our God? First, we must learn to say, Lord, it's not about me anymore. It's all about you. It's not what I want anymore. Is what you want. Amen? So when we serve God, we don't serve God for our own agenda. My friends, don't get me wrong. Yeah? The pictures you see here are strictly not for fundraising. Okay, I'm not asking you for money. I'm not raising funds. I thank God that 17 to 18 years in the field, 
we never ever have to raise a single cent. Why? Because God always provides and we always take a portion of our profits and it's always more than enough to feed all these kids. Amen? So I want to just, yeah, come on, let's give God the glory. So I want to encourage all my brothers and sisters and also all those online, if you are going through financial crisis, okay, financial problems, be of good cheer. Why? Because the Lord, our God, that you and I serve is a God that will provide. Amen? Amen. So trust in Him. Do not waver. Don't look at your situation and be dismayed. Don't look at the condition and then you go into despair and start to throw a pity party for yourself. Amen? Okay? So when I look at my situation, naturally, I will say, Lord, if it's possible, can you let this cup of suffering pass from me? <laughs> right? Like what Jesus said, but nevertheless, let your will be done. Amen? So when we serve the Lord, it is like that. So cancer in the head, frying pasta, 12 hours a day, cancer still growing, yeah, by the way. So as I'm serving the Lord in the mission field, this cancer also travel with me. So this cancer actually is very well traveled. Okay, it's been all around the world with me. So when I continue to work hard, we also continue to serve in the mission field and this goes on for years and then suddenly the relapse came because this is the situation, this is the condition of this cancer. At that point in time, during my uh, repeat uh, visit to the doctor, this is what the doctor said to me. Although you never die, but I just want to let you know, I have did some research and I realized that the relapse rate for this form of cancer is 95%. What does that mean? It means, as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, surely this cancer will come back. Okay? So, it's like a death sentence upon a death sentence. It's just not yet die lah. Still, we'll, we'll come back, we'll relapse. Then I say, relapse, then what happened? Operate. Lo. Then after that, operate again. Lo. Then I say, after that, after that, operate until cannot operate. <laughs> so you see, my friends, is no hope. It is in a situation where there is no hope, okay? There is no medication, there is no cure. I cannot do chemotherapy. There's nothing I can do other than surgery. So this is my condition. And I still have to fry pasta, whether I'm tired or not tired. Okay? I still have to feed the kids, go onto the mission field. And every time in the mission field, it's very challenging because there is no doctor there. Right? There's no um, proper facility. It's always dirty. And I always have painkillers in my pocket. And this is how we serve the Lord. Never complain. It's not an ideal situation at all. Okay? I'm very sick can die any time. The only thing I have in my pocket is not the Holy Spirit. It's painkiller. <laughs> but again, it's not that I have no faith, okay? What happens when the painkillers don't work? After two, four, cannot ready, don't want to overdose, right? So what happened? Kneel down and pray. <laughs> so on the one hand, I will touch where it's painful. On the other hand, I will just lift it up to God and say, Lord, Please help me, Lord. Please help me. I have no more strength, Lord. Please help me. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. And every time, God is always faithful. He will always come and He will always relieve me from my pain and He will always allow me to have some sleep and some rest. Amen. God is always merciful, my friends. God loves all of us and God will come true for you, whatever your challenges may be, whatever your situation may be. So when I go through the daily affairs of you know, cooking, and there was one time where I was frying pasta, my membrane came down. You know, your membrane, you, you, you don't know because if your membrane come down, that's it. right? So you hardly see the membrane because it shouldn't come down. Mine came down because after surgery, my left side is very weak. So the membrane came down and I was like, 
I can't see, but still the customer was in front, they're all folding their arms. Eh? You know, still have to fry pasta. <laughs> so I have to quickly fry, finish everything. Then I go there, I want to go and wash my face. And then I said, Lord, if you don't heal me, how can I continue to fry pasta and feed the kids? So Lord, please, if you have called, if indeed I am your servant, then please will you heal me? <laughs> and so I looked into the mirror, I blinked one time, two times, and three times, ding, the, the, the thing went up. And I said, eh, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, give God the glory. <laughs> well, this is the funniest thing, okay? Because when I went to the doctor and I shared with him, I said, hey, you know what? Uh, that day my membrane came down. Then I bling, 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 the thing go up. He looked at me, hey, hello. The membrane come down will not go up one. <laughs> so I said, but mine go up, leh. <laughs> so I know, I know that Jesus heals, Amen. And there was one time where I was cooking the sauce. You know, I got 10 sauce pots, you know. 10 sauce pots. Uh. Because one machine will cost you about 15,000. But I said, no, this is my 15,000, you know. So, <laughs> so I, will, I will stir the sauce pot, okay. And then because I have no balance, okay, and because kitchen floor is wet, so somebody shouted, the parking, parking lady come ready. So I got panicked. I don't know why, but I slipped and then my hand went into the sauce pot. Okay? And my entire arm was covered with the sauce. So I go to the sink, I wash it off, the skin came out. Okay? And you know, F&B people like us, we have no time to see doctor. Okay? Don't get me wrong, yeah? I'm not saying if you're sick, don't go and see doctor, okay? It's just that at that time, I didn't have time. So what did I do? I just lift up my arm. It was in so much pain. Okay? Imagine your skin come out. And I just said to the Lord, Lord, I'm injured. Was so Papa was so sung. Will you heal me? Okay? And within two weeks, the Holy Spirit just showed me. Just go and buy the spray and put the, the antiseptic powder or cream. And in two weeks' time, my whole arm was healed. The only scar is this one. Other than that, you see normal, no scar, nothing. Amen. So this is the evidence. Yes, Jesus heals. Amen. For every little trial and every step of your way, you are tested. But please, my friends, don't get frustrated with God. Never get frustrated with God. I never bang the table and say, why me? Why God? Right? As if you owe me an answer. No, I don't do that. Why? Because there's reverence for the Lord. Because I know my position. Because I don't want to come before my God with such an attitude of entitlement. Okay? To demand and twist his arm and say, God, if you don't heal me, I don't want to be Christian anymore. Right? So I don't want to come before my God in such a manner. And this is what I say, Lord, if you heal me, hallelujah. And even if you don't heal me, I choose to say hallelujah. You know why? Because my friends, whether if I'm healed or not healed, God is still God. Amen? Nothing changes. Right? God is still sovereign. He is still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And even if I die, He is still God. Amen? So that is the reason why when we are facing the difficulties and the challenges in life, our attitude is very important. If we come before our God and know our position, and we will say, Lord, I choose to worship you. I choose to praise you. I'm not coming to barter with you. I'm not coming to make deals and have conditions with you. I'm just coming before you. I humble my heart. I repent from my sins. I repent from my wicked ways. And I know that you will heal my land. Amen? That's scriptural, right? So we can come before God and know what to do and not be clueless and keep getting frustrated and angry with God. God, are you even there? God, can you hear me? We don't have to do that. Why? Because for 10 years battling this cancer, it is like walking in a tunnel with no light at the end. It's pitch dark, okay? The best thing I can do is hold on to Jesus. Okay, I know this is a bit abstract for all of you. So let me give you in the biblical application terms. What is called holding on to Jesus' hand? It means to hold on to the Word of God for dear life. 
like your life depended on it. Amen? That means the word to me is everything. If he says, trust in me, I will do exactly that. I will not waver. I will not start to be creative. I will not get impatient and then create an Ishmael. You know what I mean? I will just be patient and wait for God and allow God to be God. And I will never say, how long more, God? How long more? No. I will say, Lord, whatever is your will, help me to accept my portion. Again, my friends, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I invite cancer, okay? I'm not speaking curses unto myself. Please don't be overly religious, okay? I'm only saying, God, I thank you and I praise you. I accept my portion. If this is your will for my life, I will not argue. And I'm not saying thank you for the cancer. I'm saying thank you, Jesus, because you died on the cross for me. That's more than enough. I'm not asking for anything more. And that is why every time I'm in pain, I can say, thank you, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So when we go forth facing our challenges and our struggles and our pain, what is the key here? What is the most important? It is our attitude, amen? It is our reverence for the Lord. We do not behave like He owes us something. No, my friends. Why? Because we owe Him everything. Amen? He does not owe us anything. So when we come before Him, it is that reverence, it is that trust, it is that obedience, it is just simply saying, Lord, let your will be done. Right? So you don't have to worry. This actually helps us to stop worrying. Many times when we conduct cancer seminars, the people will always ask me this very standard question. They say, Pastor, Pastor, you mean to say 10 years you battle cancer? You got no depression? Ah? Not even once? Ah? I say, no. They say, why? You know what's my answer, my friends? Very simple. Why should I? Amen? Especially for those who are suffering from depression. We got to learn to say, why should I? Every time when you brush your teeth, when you spit out, it's toothpaste, it's white, right? When I spit out, it's red, fresh blood. Then what follows after the fresh blood is blood clot. The blood clot comes from where? I don't know. It just comes out, okay? So now, you are looking at your own body deteriorating, blood coming out, and then there's a voice in your head. Where is your God now? You see? You serve God? You feed the kids? Where is your God now? You see, your God cannot even heal you. Your God has abandoned you. Where is the healing? There is no healing for you. What do you think you can do? Your God cannot save you. If you entertain those thoughts every day, I guarantee you, you will fall into depression. So what must we do as Christians, as children of God? What must we do? We know that the Son, Jesus Christ Himself, has come to set us free. And we shall be free indeed. Amen? Free from what? Free from depression. How? Very simple. This is what I say. You ask me, where is my God? Let me tell you, where is my God? My God is right here. His name is Emmanuel. And His promise is that He will never leave me and He will never forsake me. Amen? And I just wipe the blood off and I say to that voice, O oh death, where is your sting? Do you not see that I am still standing? Even until today, O oh death, where is your sting? You cannot touch me. Fear, you are nothing. Why? Because even if I die, I will die praising Him. What are you, fear? You are nothing. You cannot touch me. When I die, I know where I'm going. Amen? Because we are children of God, right? So brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Do not let your situation strike fear into your heart, 
right? Strike so much fear into you until you become paralyzed, until you go into depression. You don't have to do that. It's not your fault, okay? Don't get me wrong, it's not your fault. But if you are suffering from depression, this is the time you can say, I choose to trust in Jesus. And I know His promise is He will never leave me and He will never forsake me. Amen? So when we go forth in our daily affairs, it's never easy. Why? Because we are facing the inevitable. The cancer grows from the size of a golf ball to the size of an egg, and then from the size of an egg to the size of two eggs. All this in that 10-year period, right? So what do we do? Do we stop the mission? No. The condition is not getting any better. Do we stop the work? No. Do I still go? Yes. Am I tired? Of course I'm tired. Do I complain? Of course not, right? How can you serve your God and then complain? It shouldn't be that way, right? So when we serve the Lord, He says what? Serve with? Full of complaining. <laughs> serve with what? Serve with? Joy. Joy. Amen. Why so soft? <laughs> okay, one more time. We must serve with? Joy. Amen. Serve with joy. Why are you so afraid? Why are you in despair? Why are you so discouraged? Come on. When we look at all these things in life, we must understand this, that God is in control. Now let me share with you one more very interesting story. This pastor in the Philippines, her son, 21 years old, car accident, the son died. Her only son, her only hope, died. So what happened? Uh, this is what the Lord says. When she's crying in her pain as a grieving mother and she says to the Lord, God, you know, help me. Why is this happening? And this is what the Lord said to her. Go and start a children ministry. But God, I just lost my son. Yeah, I know. Go and start a children's ministry. So you see, my friends, for a pastor that just lost her son, God is saying to her, go and start a children's ministry. For all the love that you reserve for your son, now pour out into these lives of these little kids in this village. And she went and she started the church and everything. And when we visited, we support that ministry. And when we go there, we visited. We always make sure that, okay, uh, every weekend when these children come, make sure there's fried chicken, there's jelly, there's ice cream, there's sweets, crackers, lollipop, everything, okay? The works for the kids. And everybody is so happy. And then they worship the Lord. They give thanks. And it's wonderful. But this is the thing. She has to serve sacrificially because her son is gone. But that's not the catch. You know what's the catch of this story? She asked me this question. When you look at these children, especially these little girls there, what do you see in them? I say, well, I think that they are cute. They are very pretty, right? Very nice. So okay, what? Looks normal, right? Yeah, looks normal. Why? She says to me, do you know these children, these girls, huh? nine years old, 12 years old, they are raped by their own fathers every night. My friends, you and I, we think we have problems. Their monster and their nightmare is in their own house. The man that's supposed to protect them is raping them every night. So what do we do, my friends? If these children can come before the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus, and praise Him, their suffering and their ordeal, and what the Lord has touched this pastor to do to minister to them, do you see how God works? Are you beginning to have an idea that it's not about us anymore? That we got to learn to look beyond us and we got to just come forth and allow God to be God? Amen? So, she is the one that's encouraging these girls so that to keep their sanity, to counsel them, to help them because it's ongoing. Nothing can stop. There's no law to stop this, okay? In that, in that country. So, we have to just pray for the kids and continue to provide for them whatever we can to help them, right? 
So as I continue to do this ministry together with my wife, I'm also preparing Judith every time. I'm going home, yeah. You know, my body is getting weaker every day. Yeah, and I don't know how long I have. So are you ready? And every time her eyes will be swollen, but she always say, yes, I'm ready, and she's smiling. I know she's been crying, but she never wants to cry in front of me because she wants to be strong for me, right? So I will keep reminding her, when I die, don't be angry with God. Continue with the work. Continue to be a blessing to the orphans and the widows. And just give thanks and praise God. And so this is what we continue to do until finally in 2012, December, Judith asked me, where do you want to spend your birthday? And at that time, I know I cannot carry on anymore. That will be my last birthday. You know, my friends, when you're about to die, your body knows. Somehow, it's just very weird. It's a very weird feeling, but you just know you're going to die. So I said to Judith, I want to go to the mountains and watch the children eat again for us one last time. And we did. And when I came back, I was already unable to get up from bed. One day, I can only wake up two hours. And I will give Judith the recipe, my bank book, you know, prepare my mother, tell her, Mom, I'm going home ready. <laughs> and I said to Judith, I'm so sorry, you know, I cannot keep my promise to take care of you anymore. And we just waited for the inevitable to happen. So that was my condition. There was no hope. Nothing. No medication, no promise of healing, nothing. And then one day, from out of the blue, when I was just doing my quiet time, I'm just saying, Jesus, I'm coming home, yeah? And of course, you know, like, Jesus, not talking back. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, on and on, talking and preparing myself, praying. And suddenly, Jesus came. And this is what he said to me. I will heal you because of the tears of your wife. And from that point, everything happened very fast. One thing led to another, okay? So I was not well, preparing to die. Suddenly, I was going for my MRI. I don't know why. And then I met another surgeon. And then I went for a second surgery. And after the second surgery, it was about seven hours. It was on a Friday. I came out. I said to Judith on Saturday, I said, I cannot breathe. Shortness of breath, just cannot breathe. No more breath. Very tired, very weak. I cannot see. And it's so pain. I keep pressing the morphine. Press and press and press. And I'm still in so much pain. I said, I cannot take it anymore. I think I have to go. And I said to Judith, will you please release me? And that was the only time she broke down and she cried. And we both cried. And we held each other and we cried and cried. And she took out her phone and she says, will you please record your voice for me? Can you please say, I love you and I miss you so that when you're gone, I can still listen to your voice. And I did that. And we were just there, you know, in the afternoon. And then Saturday night, suddenly, this is what happened, okay? I was lying in my bed and then my bed started shaking like that. And then I felt the awesome presence of God coming down. It was like the weight of His glory, okay? And that presence is so amazing. My friends, you don't know what is holiness until you are in that presence. It is so holy and I just felt so small. I know we are the children of God. I know we are safe, okay? But I just felt so small and He is so awesome and He is so holy. And when Judith saw me in that condition, shivering, and then I'm like, tears coming out, and I'm crying, and I said, Jesus is here, Jesus is here. And Judith tried to come over to the bed, and then she tried to come over to the bed, suddenly, she fell under the glory of God also. And all the both of us could do was just, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You are just so holy, it's so holy. My friends, do you know what it means by as the deer panther for the water? So my soul longs after you. You know, until today, I still long for that presence, that holiness, my friends. Nothing in this world that I've ever seen or experienced can even come close. And that is how I yearn 
to be in that holiness and in that presence again. And that was what happened that night. And suddenly, he touched me on my head and breathed a new breath of God into my nostrils. And next thing, I fell asleep. Next morning, when I woke up, I saw Judy sleeping on a sofa. I said, eh, I can see. Suddenly, I started to stand up. I said, eh, I can walk. I'm not giddy. I can walk. So I took out all the needle and all the tubes and everything. Then I started walking. I said, hey, I never fall down. It means I can, I'm a healer. I said, wow, but very hot. Suddenly it was like fire in me burning. So I, no choice. I went to the bathroom, took a shower. I tried not to wet the bandage, but the shower was coming down Then the blood was coming out. Then I was showering. Suddenly I hear outside there's a commotion. Patient missing, patient missing. And then somebody pressed the emergency bell. Cring! So I just towel dry myself. I came out. I said, what happened? What happened? Who's missing? Who's missing? <laughs> so the nurse looked at me. Where do you go? How, how can you go and take a shower unassisted? Do you know you'll fall down? How can you do this type of thing? You know where you are? What's your name? <laughs> so I, I said, no, no, don't worry. Yesterday, Jesus came. He, he touched me here. Today, I'm healed. What do you mean Jesus came? What do you mean you are healed? Yesterday, you're still pressing for the morphine. Go back to your bed now. I'll call your doctor. So I, no, no, I'm healed already. Go back to your bed. So okay, la, go back to my bed. So when I was back in my bed, the doctor came. So he checked, 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 checked. He said, you know, huh? this doctor, is also, this professor is a Christian also. And he says, one year I do more than 50 cases, brain surgery. I've never seen anyone recover so fast like you. He says, this must be Jesus. Amen? Yeah, come on, let's give God the glory. So, Friday was a surgery. Saturday, Jesus visited us. Sunday, the doctor says, I'm okay. Monday morning, together with Judith, I walk out of the hospital and here I am today, fully healed, fully restored, although still deaf on one side, but I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah. So my friends, uh, where's, uh, Pastor Alan can come up. I just want to encourage you. I know many, many are our challenges, many are our struggles. From now to the day Jesus comes back, we will be constantly challenged and we have to go through a lot of you know, different trials. But I just want to encourage you. Jesus is real. He cares for all of us. And just trust in Him. He will deliver you. He will come through for all of you. Amen? Come on, let's give God the glory. Isn't God great? You know, when God wants to visit you, He don't need uh, a special appointment. Because when God wants to visit, He visits. And I believe the Lord is bringing about a visitation today whether you are on-site or you're online. And then I believe that in the midst of His sharing, some of your hearts are already in the stir. And I just want to invite you into the very presence of God. God wants to bring about a visitation, a visitation upon your heart, and to bring about a definite and sure breakthrough in a situation and the circumstances that you see yourself in. You know, as, as Jason was just speaking in that, part of the, of the testimony sharing I just feel that it's a stir in, in, in the heart, the prayer for marriages I do not know why but I will just want to obey I want to do, uh, now is just to, to get uh, the, those who are married right? those who are married, raise your hand yeah, because I just feel that the Lord is going to bring about a, a visitation on their marriage and so I, I, I ask Jason to just come along Husband and wife, if you're seated together near each other, I just want you just to hold your hand together. I just want to ask and invite Jesus to just pray into the marriages in this house. And I believe the Lord wants to bring in a visitation from the marriage. Because when the marriage is restored, the family is restored, and the glory of God will shine through. Because God designed marriage since the beginning. If His glory manifests, and bring flavor, pleasure unto Him. So I want, I want you to hold, 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 hold each other. Yes, Lord. Let us quiet down our hearts. Let us just 
commit all things into the hands of the Lord. I know among us, perhaps there may be some who have gone through divorce, who are, you know, no longer married, but still suffering in pain of the betrayal and the rejection. I also just want to encourage you that Jesus never forgotten you and Jesus still loves you and you can still join us together in this prayer because Jesus is your bridegroom, right? So Lord, we just want to come before you. We just want to trust in you. Lord, we know that you put us together for a purpose. And Father, I just want to pray for yes. all the couples represented here in this church, yes. husband and wives. Yes, I pray for your fresh anointing to be yes. upon them. Yes, Lord. I pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will speak into their hearts. Mm. Your Holy Spirit will reveal them, yes, rejuvenate them, and let their marriage be restored yes, like never before. Yes, yes Lord. Jesus. Do something new, Lord. Amen. Let it be a fresh restoration. Yes. Let it be like new. Yes, Lord. Help them, Lord, to begin to love one another according to your word. Yes, Lord. Your love is not selfish. Yes. Your love is kind. Yes, Lord. Your love is forgiving and understanding. Your love is caring for one another. Your love is being responsible. Yes, Lord. Your love is to look beyond the imperfections. Yes, Lord but to just love one another. So we thank you, Father, for that renewed love between the husbands and the wives. Yes, Lord. Restore and renew. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that Holy Spirit will lead them and guide them to lift them up, that they may be good examples to their children, to the next generation, that they will see Christ in this marriage. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord. Amen. There's another group that I think I just want to, uh, to speak into. You know, the Bible talks about we have treasures in the jars of clay. That even though we are, we are crushed, but we are not destroyed. And that I believe that the power of God can make manifest in the place of weakness. For His power is made perfect in weakness. And I believe there are some of us who are going through a certain uh, uh, situation, a context. And I just want to ask um, uh, you, you to just open up your hearts today. You know, somebody asked me, a non-Christian friend asked me, that, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a non-Christian. I, 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 you know, would God answer my prayer? And I, my reply to him is very simple. Would a father not hear the prayer, the cries of a children? And we say that you are you are a stranger, you are someone else's children. You know, God is our Father and any one of us who call out upon His name, the Bible says, He who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? So this is the second part of the prayer that I want us to just open up your hand. That if you find yourself in a situation that your faith is tested, that you, you there's a hope, but... but far away yet to be seen you'll find yourself in the context that you've never seen a breakthrough whether it's the financial is it a health that it is a, it's a relationness whatever that may mean and it's for you it, it, it's something that you desire to see change and, and a breakthrough but you cannot see it if you if you are the one I just want you to just open your palm today and say yet I will trust in you Yet I will trust in God who is loving, who is all compassionate, who is all presence, and who, will, who can and will be able to answer. So I want you to just open up your palm today. If that speaks to you, that you desire to see a breakthrough of a situation, of a condition, open up palm today. Lord, as we bring forth our burdens by your feet, teach us, Lord, to lay them by your feet yes, and to leave it there. Yes, Jesus. Help us not to take it back again, but just to obediently surrender it to you. And as we continue to trust in you and to walk by faith, we know that, Lord, yes, Lord. as we allow you to take charge of our lives, as we surrender and allow you to be sovereign in all that we do, in all that we think and in all that we feel, we know that, Lord, You will direct our path and You will grant us a breakthrough. Yes, Lord. And as we repent and come before You yes, with humbled hearts, 
with a broken and contrite spirit that you do not despise. You will bring healing into our lives. You will bring restoration and you will provide for us. We trust you and we thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Amen. 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 Let's thank you, Jason. You know, people of God, just let us arise. That's the last invitation. I believe that the Lord wants to bring about our visitations. Can people just arise? Can I invite the worship teams? I believe the Lord wants to touch you. And I believe there are those in our midst who have yet to receive Christ into your life. Whatever journey, whatever uh, path that you have walked, know that the Lord has always been in your life. And the Bible says this, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave. For God so loved the world that He gave. The love of God is not just a, a marshmallow in the sky, nice to look at, far, hard to reach. But the Bible tells us that God loved the world, that God so loved you and me, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In other words, it is a very simple thing. It's a simple thing because the Lord demonstrate His love. It is in receiving we begin to encounter the visitations of the Lord. And it's that some of us who have yet to receive Jesus into your life. And one of the things that I believe that when moments we receive Christ into your life, you begin to look at life in a brand new way. You begin to look at the situation in life in a brand new way. And you begin to live life in a brand new way. Because the Lord comes into your life because He began the new thing. John 3 says things tells us of the four greatest. It tells us of the greatest love of God. The sacrificial love of God that He will not withhold heaven best because He loves you. He loves you to the end. The Bible tells us of the greatest gift that He gave unto us. He gave of Himself. He gave of His Son. That He died on the cross. It is by His death that you begin to experience the resurrected life. And there are some of us who have been living life in a, in, in, in a, six, in a, in a cyclical manner. There's a, there's, a, there's a depression, there's a round and round things that are going through your life that you can never find a breakthrough. You, you go around, the same thing happen again. You're hit by the wall again for whatever that means for you. And the Bible tells us that God gave us the greatest gift and that's of His Son. Because of that greatest gift, He says, whoever, anyone, absolutely anyone, anyone can come unto Him. That's the greatest invitation. And the promise is, He says, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Shall not perish, but have eternal life. And the promise is for you and true for you. And if you receive the Lord into your life, you begin to experience the eternal life. What is eternal life? That is to know God. The only one condition it says here is to believe. What does believing mean? Believing is just not a cognitive cons- uh, ascent that, oh yeah, but it is, it is saying that, Lord, I am willing to make you the Lord of my life. I don't want to be the CEO of the universe because you know what? I make a mess. But I will let you be the Lord of my life. And I'd like you to be the saviour of my life because you gave your life unto me and it is through you I begin to experience the new life. And if you are ready, and all I want you to do today is very simple, that is just to open your palm. Open your palm. God wants to give you His Son. He can only give you if you are willing. He says, whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that speaks into your heart. I want to encourage you to open your palm. Open your palm because God wants to give him, give you His Son. If that speaks to you, if that connects to you, and that you have not known Him, today is the day. Today is the day that you can receive Jesus into your life. And you will make something new, something great out of your life. And I'd like to encourage the rest of us who have received Jesus to affirm the prayer that we prayed long time ago, whatever it means for us. 
and then we will say this together to those who want to receive Christ into your life. Is it possible? Come, let's just say this prayer together. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Wherever you are, the Lord knows you. The Lord knows your journey. The Lord has seen it. The Lord has seen your tears. The Lord has carried you. The Lord is intimately well-versed with your life. And most of all, the Lord says to you today, come, come, come into a, a friendship with me. Come into a relationship with me. I begin to pour out the mysteries of life and what it means to live. And you begin to experience the abundance of life that I have designed life to be. Come, come and dine with me. Come and begin, come and receive my son so that in him you will have life and life abundantly. Amen. And you are ready, you say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you, thank you. For, loving me. for loving me. I am sorry. I'm sorry for all the wrong I've done in my life. And I ask you to forgive me. Give me the gift of eternal life, of life in, with you. Help me to walk with you every day of my life and be the Lord of my life and to have full control over my life. And most of all, give me the gift of the Holy Spirit so that I may experience the newness of life, the power of life, and life new direction through you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us give the Lord a clear offering. And if you have received Jesus today, I want you to just raise your hand. I just want you to raise your hand. We want to just want to celebrate with you. Anyone have received Jesus into your life? Raise your hand. I cannot see you. It's too bright. Your ma. Okay. All right. So we, we just want to sing this song. Ten thousand reasons. No. What's the song? Okay. We make a come. Let's sing together. You are here. Moving in the midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Thank you. 
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, Lord, you are, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, way maker, way maker, you are, way of fire and just let you know that Jesus stands with you and he shall go through that totally untouched because the presence of the Lord surrounds you and protects you he will lead you in the time of darkness that he will be the light to show you the way even in the time that we find that yourself as most alone know that where the Lord is that's where his love is and he will touch you in the most amazing way and all that we need to do is to just to look to him because indeed he is the way maker and the miracle worker he has done such a wonder in the life of Jason and even Judith and I believe the Lord can do the same thing for you even as I stand here and I see here I know that those tears that you shed are precious in his sight and those tears communicates in the manner in which you and the Lord knows. And so, Lord Father, I just want to pray for everyone represented here. Lord, I just want to pray for the, the conversation, the divine conversations that every one of us has engaged with you. And Lord, I just want to ask that God, that Lord, you say in the scriptures, that Lord, you, you, you hold every tears in the bottle. And that Lord, you know. And that Lord God, you will answer us in the way, in the manner, in your time and that all these shall come to pass and so Lord we just want to ask that this divine uh, visitation of you that God we just want to pray your presence to continue in the rest of our days in the rest of the coming weeks and the months in the, in the, in the, in the challenges that we face in our life and that we we'll begin to see that indeed the, every good promises of you will come to pass and so Lord we want to thank you we want to praise you Allow me to just close today with, a, with just a simple benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, all the days, day and night, 24-7. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of ring.